Allen FM on 105 FM Community Radio at its best. Right, what's going on about town then? Right then, uh, Theatre Cluid, I have to say, has had some wonderful visiting companies lately, but uh, none are as inventive as the latest. They're Payne's Plough Roundabout Theatre Company, and uh, they come to town with an awesome pop-up theatre that's been placed in the grounds of Theatre Cluid. Uh, they'll be po- performing three brand new plays, the first being the emotive tale, How to Be a Kid, telling the story of Molly, uh, a young 12-year-old, played faultlessly by uh, the adult actress Katie Ellen Salt uh, who's been forced to look after her mother and younger brother after her mum is hit with mental illness all three plays How to Be a Kid, Out of Love and Black Mountain are all performed by the same team actors Katie Ellen Smith uh, Sally Mesham and uh, Hassan Dixon and directed by James Grieve and I popped up there on Thursday night of this week and, uh, and I caught a word with James Grieve and uh, Katie Allen Salt and uh, started by asking James about the superbly innovative pop-up theatre it is awesome, all I've got to say to you right is just go up there, just drive past if you're in the vicinity, just drive past Theatre Cluid and have a look at the big dome outside, it's amazing amazing, and if you think when you go in there that you're just going to be going into a tent or like a marquee or something, think again you're going into another world here's director James Grieve first so we came up with the idea in 2010 and it's it's four years of fundraising and head scratching and getting lots of people who are much cleverer than us to work out how it could all work. The idea was just to have a theatre that could pop up in places that didn't have existing theatre infrastructure. Yeah. So most of the time, I mean, here it's amazing being here, but most of the time we go to places that don't have theatres in the town or don't have theatres in the surrounding area and we pop it up and it feels like a bit like the circus coming to town. It's something that people don't have a chance to. Yeah. But I like I like this in your programme when it's every you can go anywhere, car parks or anything. I yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get to a pub car park and you want to do that. Yeah, I mean we go to in the autumn we're going out on tour with it and it goes to um, the sea f- so there's a promenade in Margate and just slap outside um, Dreamland, the, the old um, amusement park yeah. on the seafront. Pool, it goes to a big park in the centre of town, we're going to Grassmere in the Lake District, popping up in the field. Um, Stoke in the pedestrian town centre, you know, right. just it just goes yeah anywhere there's a space. Do you get invited places or can you just literally go anywhere you fancy? Yeah, we get invited places. We try and work rather than just showing up. We try and work with the local community in advance of us coming to sort of go. What would you like if if, we, if you had this theatre? What would you like in it? So um, when we go out on tour, we've got a kind of week long festival in each place. That's the shows that we take on tour but also loads of work that local people have either made themselves or produced themselves or asked for so it could be DJs it could be um, we had a colliery brass band in Barnsley we have pensioners tea dances we have children's gymnastics we have baby sensory classes we have like local history society does it all talk it's just anything and everything yeah. so technically how long does it take to put it on? it takes a day it's like six people a day um, and we've got we've got a crew now six lads that um, have been doing it for a, for right. a while so it goes up pretty quickly um, is that dressing rooms and everything in it? no it doesn't we have I mean when we're places like here we use the dressing rooms and doors if we're uh, if there's nothing out no infrastructure around it then we put another little oh, right. tent on the sides okay so I mean what you saw when you came in is the, the sort of there's like alcoves all the way around it yeah. so there's loads of storage space and um, we can we can store um, food and drinks in there if we need to give people stuff um, and the actors can sort of hang out up there just before the show but there's no sort of right. in other infrastructure in terms of right. dressing rooms or whatever around it. Oh, fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. If anyone hasn't seen it, they've got to come and have a look at just come and have a look at, just have a look at the dome. Yeah. Um, this How To Be A Kid, is it, is it directed at children? Yeah, it's primarily written for 7 to 11 year olds. Oh, okay. Like key stage 2. Um, but hopefully, as you saw tonight, it, it, there's lots in there for, for grown ups. Yeah. And the most exciting audience to play to play the show to is an audience like tonight, where there was lots of lots of young people in the audience who really seem 
to engage with, with lots of it, but um, but there's also lots of adults or parents or guardians who who um, who get the jokes that are meant for the grown ups. Yeah. Um, so there's you know hopefully there's a bit in there for yeah. everyone, but primarily it's it's about yeah seven quite years. it's quite heavy going as a story. Yeah. Because I, I mean, I got quite emotional. I thought for a child who may be going through these things that the, uh, Molly's going through, yeah. uh, quite heavy duty, that. Yeah, I mean, I think it was, it was so important to us that we didn't shy away from depicting the reality of uh, the experiences of children who uh, experience mental health in their parents or guardians, mental health difficulties in their parents or guardians, or that um, experience the care system. So, um, yeah, it is. It, it, you know, it doesn't shy away from the difficulties in Molly's life but I hope that we counterpoint that with lots of dancing to Taylor Swift and fun <laughs> and magic and adventure <laughs> and that ultimately the play is about um, about acknowledging that you can't you can't be happy all the time and when when you're 12 as Molly is that's the bit in your life where you suddenly go oh hold on this being grown up like this yeah. is a bit this is a bit tricky this isn't it Do they literally come and talk to you about it if, if they've been talking to Well, they about haven't that. spoken to um, me about it personally yet because we've not really crossed paths, but they do workshops either before or after the shows. Yeah. And um, they do things like they make their own red box and put their, their own worries in their own red box and throw them away. And they oh, okay. talk about being a superhero and their worries. And I think that's like really important, you know, for kids to talk about their own mental health and their well being. I think yeah. it's a really important thing for them to talk about. Yeah. 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 Because, yeah. I mean, it's very, I mean, apparently, I mean, I, I don't know that much about it, to be honest with you, but I mean, <laughs> mental health, especially in kids, has gone up so high. Yeah. And, and nobody seems to be able to put a, a mark on what it is. I'm blaming terrorism, to be honest with you. Yeah. I think it freaks them out. And, yeah. you know, it's difficult to watch something like that on TV and then go to bed and not worry. I think you're right. And I think the kids nowadays live in a really hard world just because of that and also because of, like, social media and pressure. And, you know, the, the kids nowadays don't just go home and be... They, you know, many years ago, they used to go home and be at home. But nowadays, you've got Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. And yeah. I think it's a... They grow up very quickly, kids nowadays, yeah. and that's why, like, our play, How to Be a Kid, is about being a kid, you know, and about remembering it's okay to be young and it's, yeah. you don't have to grow up too fast and do yeah. all that sort of thing. Yeah. Now. Awesome, awesome piece of work, it really is, and that, that dome is just phenomenal. I came to see a Payne's Plow production here, uh, Love Lies and Taxi Oh, yes, that was, the, that was the roundabout season last yes. year. And, uh, and, the, and the girl I spoke to was telling me about it, and I thought, I'd love to see that. Yeah. And it was weird because I was sat in there, I thought, oh, man, no. Yeah, well, <laughs> Funnily enough, Remy, the girl who did it last it? year. Yeah, Remy, yeah. so she's one of my best friends. Right, yeah. So we went to drama school together and we lived together. And so she did it last year. So she's sort of been my guru in this. You know, I've been ringing her going, how do you learn all your lines? And she goes, you do, you know, just keep your head down and crack on. Yeah. And so it's been good to have a friend who's done it before and know that, you know, she lived to tell the tale, <laughs> yeah. you know. Because you want to do it three productions, aren't you, at the yeah. same time? Yeah. Is that, is that hard? Is that really difficult? Well, I've never... It's funny, rep theatre, which is what, you know, three plays in rep, that used to exist a lot like back in the day but as a young actor we don't really do it anymore but actually as an it's such a gift as an actor to be doing three completely different plays and playing three completely different parts at the same time you know I mean we're very lucky to do the, the different roles like that in our you know in our whole career you know let alone on the same job because it so. actually sounds like a nightmare well, <laughs> if, if you enjoy it, I suppose. Well, I've had worse nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> so, is it the same three actors as well? Yeah, so there's just three of us, and we all play all the different parts in the plays and right. stuff. And the, the, um, they're all new writing, so Payne's Plow is all new writing. So, the plays have been written specifically for the roundabout season, and then right. the three of us auditioned and were lucky enough to get cast. Yeah. And so, we've had to sort of fit into all these different roles. And so, there's been a lot of a lot of lines to learn yeah. but you know I did because I've, I've worked in theatre Cluid lots of times and I did um, educating Rita here a couple of years ago oh and, did you? yeah that was a, that's a in the end of Williams it? actually yeah now that's, that must be uh, <laughs> one of the things to learn well it was 
was, it was, but it's funny. Like, I found that really hard at the time, but um, I think this is even harder because, you you know, your mind's on three plays. At once, at least when you're yeah. doing one big role, you can put all your focus on that. But yeah. it's about, you know, you get the one play locked down and then you go, oh, I've got to do the other one. I've got to learn my line to the other one, you know. Yeah. We will get there. Well, I was watching you and I thought... You basically speak for the whole thing, don't you? You, do. don't, you don't really stop speaking. Mm. Is that something you have a problem with? <laughs> oh, I, funnily enough, I, I don't have any sort of problem with that. That's something that comes naturally to me. Yeah. <laughs> My mother used to say when I was um, when I was little, the teacher used to say, stop talking, Katie. And I'd say, everyone's talking. they say, yes, but you're the only one we can hear. <laughs> <laughs> that to me. So I'm doing it for a living now. There we are. Well, maybe there's something uh, in that. So I, I often wonder if it's easier to learn a lot, or is it because you've basically learned the whole story, yeah. or is it easy, more difficult for like, like the other girl to just, just pop in and be a character for two seconds and pop out again? Well, I think they both have their challenges, you know. Because for me, I'm, I'm I have more lines and I'm on stage more of the time. But at least once I'm on stage, I'm on stage. With poor Sally, there's that bit when she goes round the oh. drive through and she's like, you should see her right backstage running, and and it's really weird because the first show it was. It really spun us all out because you're in the round and then we walked on stage and I'd sort of be navigating myself by the colours on the chairs and I didn't really take into account there'd be audience sitting on them. Yeah. So I got on stage and thought, oh, I don't know where I am. But, uh... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, anyway, good luck with the rest of the run. Thank you very and, much. Uh, it's an awesome piece of work, honestly. Oh, it's, thanks. Uh... It's fab and it's br absolutely brilliant to be back in Theatre Cluid. I've got such fond memories of this place and like, the audiences are always amazing. It's, it's a joy to be back. So there you go, Sarah McDonald Hughes' How to Be a Kid, currently running up at Theatre Cluid in the Roundabout Dome. I think I'll call it the Roundabout Dome. I don't, I don't know if I'm right calling it that, but uh, it's a, a terrific piece of work, that. Really, really good. Uh, three awesome actors who are really earning their money, I've got to tell you, because not only are they playing in How to Be a Kid, they will also be in the world premieres of uh, Eleanor Cook's Out of Love and uh, Brad Birch's brand new Black Mountain. If you would like to go and see any of the three, uh, the box office number, I'll give you it again, 01352 701 521. 01352 701 521 and they are all running up at Theatre Cluid until the 22nd of July. So, oh, incidentally, How to Be a Kid, it does come with a warning. It says uh, it contains dancing, chocolate cake and an epic car chase. Sounds great. Take the kids. Take the kids this week. Go on, give them a treat. OK, support your local theatre, ladies and gentlemen. It'll not be there forever if you don't. 